for everybody's favorite guessing game, What's My Line? Brought to you by Helene Curtis, makers of Starbet, Suave, and Endon Dandruff Treatment Shampoo. Now, let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers from coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. We are very happy, as we always are, to welcome back as our guest panelist, that radio star and very amusing young man, Robert Q. Lewis. Yeah. Thank you, Dorothy. To my left, a very charming lady with a lovely Easter bonnet. And despite New York's heat today, the flower on it has not wilted. Miss Arlene Francis. Thank you, Thank you Robert Hughes. And now a gentleman who is just poised in flight once again on his way to California to join his beautiful wife, Phyllis, Mr. Bennett Surf. his second Peabody Award, which he got for his wonderful coverage of the conventions last year, our eloquent but obfuscatory Ooh. master of ceremonies, <laughs> Mr. John Charles <laughs> Daly. I don't know what things are coming to when a man uses language like that on television. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. We have a little springtime present for the panel tonight. You don't have to put on your blindfolds. Hey, and we'll have a famous mystery guest before the panel a little bit later in the show, and we'll meet our first challenger in just one minute. Let's meet our first contestant. Will you come in and sign in, please? Matteau, is that right? Uh, is it Miss or Mrs.? Miss. Miss Matteau, yes. and where are you from? Brussels, Belgium. From Brussels, Belgium? Yes. Fine. Well, it's nice to have you in the United States. Miss Matteau, the panel. And now, will you come here, please? And sit right here. Do you know how we keep score on what's my line? Yes, sir. All right, if you know how we keep score, let's let... Our friends here and the folks who are viewing at home know exactly what your line is. All right, panel, Miss Matteau is salaried, and let's begin the general questioning with Bennett, sir. Miss Matteau, I, I must observe that you're about the nicest looking Brussels sprout I've ever seen. Ooh, ah. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> there, there's going to be a great World's Fair in Brussels this summer, Miss Matteau. Mm -hmm. Have you got any connection, whatever, with this mm -hmm. exposition? No. That's one down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, I associate Brussels, where I, to my regret, I've never been, uh, with a rather unique form of transportation. Do you have anything to do with transportation? No. Two down and eight to go, Miss Lewis. And Paris. just in case the panel is off on a sticky wicket, it is to be noted that Miss Matteau said that she was from Brussels. <laughs> not necessarily resident there now. Ms. She Lewis. labors in our vineyards. Yes. I beg your pardon. Nothing. Uh, <laughs> shall I proceed? Please, John. Uh, Miss Matteau, do you deal in services? Yes. Uh, do you, are your services available to both men and women? Yes. Uh, do you work for a profit-making organization? Yes. Uh, is your work here in America and not in Belgium? Yes. Uh, you deal with both men and women. Would they come to you for your services? Uh, yes. Do you work in an, uh, an office, a normal kind of office? Sometimes. Sometimes. You also work in other places? Yes. But is most of your work done indoors? Not necessarily. Most of your work done indoors. This, I think, leaves us with a very difficult decision to make. Would you say more than 50% was not indoors? 
three. You would. That's fine. That makes it three <laughs> down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Do people watch you when you're working? No. No. They're I wouldn't fools. think. <laughs> Four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Miss Matteau, I don't think we've settled yet. Do you work for profit-making organizations? Yes. yes, that has been determined. Has that been determined? Yes. Uh, do you do anything with your hands? Sometimes. Only sometimes? Yes. Do you sometimes just think? That's right. Yes, you could describe it as thinking. <laughs> when do you uh, teach or give advice of any kind? No. No. That's five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallis. Now, we have ruled out all kinds of transportation, right? Even in the United States? We have generally ruled out transportation, yes. Uh, Miss Matto is not in any way connected with an airline. That's correct. Is there any product involved in what you do? No. No, that makes it six down and four to go, Mr. Lewis. Miss Matto, you, of course, look beautiful this evening, and uh, you're all dressed up in your Easter finery, I'm sure. <laughs> but would you wear... Am I right in assuming that you would not wear any special uniform to do the kind of work you do? I do not wear uniform. Yes, you, you are right in that assumption. Uh, when you do your work, uh, suppose I were to avail myself of your services, would I be better off as a result of what you did to me or <laughs> what uh, I, you, whatever? Yeah, I mean. <laughs> well, I know I'd be, I know I'd be happy just to associate with you, but... Uh, it would is I... a reasonable assumption, Robert, that we, if you were to avail yourself of Miss Matteau's services, that you would be uh, happier as a result of the services that were seen. Thank you, sir. What I'm trying to get at is, would you, could you possibly uh, give me advice of any kind mm. in your work? Yes, in a manner of speaking, we would have to agree that if you were to avail yourself of Miss Matteau's services, you would be getting advice of a kind. Miss Matteau, may I ask you, is the job you do common for women? I mean, is it or do you ordinarily see women employed in, your, in what you do? Not too much. Not too frequently. No, I would think if you have reference here, as I assume you do, to numbers, then oh, we would have to say that there were not a great number employed this way. Seven down and three to go, Miss Francis. Do you touch the people that you come in contact with? No. No? That makes it eight down and two to go, Mr. Sir. You do not touch them. Uh, did you have to have any special sort of training or education, Miss Mantel, for the yes. job that you have? Yes, you I did. think we would have to agree, Bennett, that there was an area of training necessary. Uh, would it be a training at uh, some kind of special school or college? No, no, I don't think so. Nine down and one to go, Miss Kilgallen. Then we would call it training rather than education. Yes. Is that correct? Uh, would you say that there were uh, more men doing what you do than women? Yes. And you're outdoors part of the time. Yes. Uh, is there anything um, artistic or uh, decorative about what you do? No. No, that's ten down and no more to go. <laughs> this is going to shock you, panel. <laughs> Miss Matteau is a private detective. Ah. <laughs> and I must add that her name is not Miss Matteau. Actually, that is uh, a pseudonym. Well, that's Miss Matteau is it. with the Burns International Detective Agency, and they just don't wish her real name to be used as a matter of security. What do you detect, Miss Matteau? <laughs> Oh, okay. I'd be delighted to have her trail me <laughs> any time she wants to. Uh, Ninety-eight percent of it is industrial work. Uh, checking on, for instance, money that's disappearing. She might be put in an office to find out oh, who is doing oh, it. Husbands who get too industrious. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's very... It's 98 percent of it's just pure industrial investigation. John, I'm, yes, ready. Ms. I'm ready for a pinch. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, John, I was wondering, now that she's been seen by billions on television, is she going to wear a mustache from now on? <laughs> 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 no, actually, that, uh, I think you have to have constant appearance on television before you give too much away. Thank you very much, Miss Pateau. It's nice to have you with us. On this. <laughs> All right, panel, let's see what we can do with the second challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please? Joe? Bivoni, is it? Joe Bivoni. Uh, 
Joe, if I may, uh, where are you from? Teaneck, New Jersey. Teaneck, New Jersey. Fine. Well, you're practically home, and I'm sure you're familiar with the mem members of the panel. Will you come over and sit down? You know how we keep score? All right, let's let everybody except the panel here and about know exactly what your line is. panel, Mr. Bovoni is salaried, <laughs> and let's begin the general questioning with Bob Lewis. Uh, Mr. Bovoni, do you deal in services? Yes. Might uh, I avail myself of your services? Yes. <laughs> Could anyone on the panel avail themselves of your services? Yes. Uh, is your work seasonal at all? <laughs> you know, I love to get laughs, but I don't like them when I don't know why I'm getting them. Uh, is your work in any way, does it, is it more, do you do it more in the summer than in the winter? Yes. Uh, has it anything to do with sports or recreation? <laughs> yes? No. 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 No, I, don't th I think we would have to agree that that covers a large area, but it hasn't to do with sports, organized sports or organized recreation. That's one down and nine to go, Miss Francis. But is there something about what you do that is amusing to other people? Might be. <laughs> Did we determine whether there is a product connected with what you do, Mr. Bavoni? No, no, the question no. hasn't been asked. <laughs> A no. product? No, no, that no. makes it two down and eight. Right. Mr. <laughs> Sir. Mr. Bavoni, uh, do you have anything to do with cleaning things up or beautifying <laughs> things? <laughs> no. Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Could, could I hire you or could I participate in whatever it is that you do? Yes. Would I be better off after I had done so? <laughs> <laughs> We like to think so. You might. Would I, would I have to see you in order to do this? Couldn't be done over the telephone. No. No, you, you have to see Mr. Bavoni to do it. Would it be more likely that I would do this out of doors than indoors? No. You're rather tanned. That's not fair. <laughs> no, I think uh, you would be, would be... We'd be done indoors. Indoors, in the general terminology, yes. Four down and six to go, Mr. Lewis. Mr. Bavoni... Uh, you said no recreation. Uh, do you have anything whatsoever to do with entertainment in its broadest sense? <laughs> uh, and it's seasonal. Uh, uh, could there be, uh, could you have anything to do with a, uh, an amusement park of some kind? Yes. Oh, I wait a minute. Does what, uh, and if, if, I, if, uh, oh, well. I would, if we're going to trade jobs, I think I'm... Uh, do you have anything to do with water? No. Oh, no. That no, makes no it water. five down and five to go, sure Miss Francis. Do you have some kind of a concession at, a, at an entertainment park, at an amusement park? No. no. By which you mean his own, does he no, have No, uh, no, not necessarily his own, but does he operate a concession of some kind at an amusement if park? If Mr. Bavoni is willing to accept the amendment to the original question, we will let it stand. Are you willing well, to accept the amendment? Well, I don't think he ought to do anything without seeing his lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if he's in the kind of business I think he's in. <laughs> <laughs> do you have anything to do with something that would pertain to a tunnel of love or anything like that? <laughs> 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 Robert, don't. Don't, Robert. This one is not on water. This one's on dry land. Oh, I'd have to try that one. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm correct, am I not? That's this is a one on dry land. It's a train sort of affair. Train sort of thing, yes, yeah. On a third that. rail. Wait, on so a third, third rail. rail. Is it Palisades At Palisades Park. Park. Palisades mm -hmm. amusement. Not even water effect? No, 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 no water. No, this is a very dry one. You know, it's been a drought lately. What? <laughs> well, if it's not in water, how do you get rid of your date if you don't like her? I mean, usually you drown them, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there we go. Now, the lawyer, you get all the rest of the cards. But thank you very much, Mr. Bonnie. Nice thank to you. have you with us and watch my life. We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just...
Now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity for which my friends in the panel are blindfolded. Blindfolds on in place, panel? Oh, yes, sir. Yep. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? Panel, as you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, we go to a different form of questioning. You ask questions one at a time, in turn, moving clockwise, and we begin it all with uh, Arlene Francis. Are you a performer in the picture business? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you also uh, occasionally appear on television? Uh, yeah. Uh, do you sing or dance? <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> what a nice to go, Mr. Lewis. Is your work more in television now than in motion pictures? Yeah. Miss Francis? Do you do a regular a program every week in television? Yeah. Is it on, uh, I hope, the Columbia <clears throat> Broadcasting Network? No! <laughs> Three down and eight to go, Miss Gilgallon. Is it live rather than filmed? No. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Lewis. Is it a situation comedy? Mm. Yeah. Miss Francis. Uh, you play a part which requires you to have a wife? <laughs> That's nice. He has a wife. Yeah. You also have children on this program? Yeah. Uh, are you, uh, even when you're not on television, when you're doing something, it, well, may I withdraw that kind of bumbly sentence? Yeah. Um, do you ever perform in supper clubs? No. <laughs> <laughs> One out of six to go, Mr. Lewis. Uh, sir, is your program one that has been on for more than one season? In other words, it began before this season. Yeah. Miss Francis? From the reaction of the audience, might I judge that it's possible that you might have won an award? Yeah. Mr. Sir? Did you win one of the Emmy or Peabody Awards this year? Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Dogella? Uh, were you ever in a Broadway show written by Rogers and Hart? Ooh. <laughs> no! That makes it five down and five to go, Mr. Lewis. Uh, your program was in difficulty at one point, but is now firmly entrenched in the hearts and sets of the nation. Is that correct? What he said. <laughs> For a while, you were in... Uh, well, in... actually, but if you have a firm idea of I what do. it is, well, why don't you pose that Is one? this Robert Young? Yes, Oh, it is. no. <laughs> Yes, there you go, <laughs> <laughs> around with it, I got in trouble. <laughs> Father knows best with wife and children. Whole bunch of children. Whole bunch of children. <laughs> 8.30 to 9 p.m. on NBC, not CBS, Bennett. We were just on last night on, in Sitting Pretty. They ran it as a late show, the late, late show. I heard they had. Did you I, see it? No. <laughs> well, now, this is a chance to ask a question. Now, there was a film, which I'm sure you were happy to be a part of. Yes, How do you feel about sense. it being on television? Well, I was a little bit surprised, in fact, because, uh, as you probably know, there's a, uh, a limitation, you know. Uh, in other words, films made after 1948 are, are not, uh, there's some agreement that they won't be shown. And I somehow had the impression that Sitting Pretty had been made since 48. I looked it up, and it was made just in 48. So, oh, uh, maybe, maybe they're thinking of a sequel. I think it was, uh, uh, we had a rather amusing experience here not very long ago. The little fellow that got the uh, bowl of mush on his head um, worked in our show, one of our shows here just recently. He's a great that? big 17-year-old boy, and I uh, thought I had seen him somewhere before, but I wasn't <laughs> quite sure. Now I've got the $64 question. In raising your own family, did you ever take a bowl of cereal and upend it on one of your youngsters' heads? Not with a camera turning. <laughs> Well, I must say it's nice to have you with us. You have come, uh, and I don't mean this as just flattery, you have come with uh, your show and in your own personal life to kind of symbolize an American father. 
Very properly, I think you were named TV Father of the Year last year. Uh, you do us That's right. It worries proud. me a little bit, too. <laughs> well, it shouldn't. You do us all proud, Bob. It's nice to have had you on What's My Line. And Thank you, for being our Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All righty, let's see what we can do with another challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please? Bill? Bill Surata, is that right? Bill? Where are you from? New York City. From New York City. Bill, the panel. Mr. Surata, will you come over here and join me? You know how we keep score? All right, since time is running out, let's let everybody but the panel know exactly what your line is. All right, panel, Mr. Serrata is salaried, and let's begin the general questioning with Dorothy Kilgallen. Mr. Serrata, does your work require any training? Uh, no, no. Not of Anyone the any particular kind or specific kind. One down and nine to go, Mr. Lewis. Is what you do uh, a service? Do you render a service? I do, yes. To uh, people of both sexes? Uh, <laughs> no, not to people. Uh, 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 oh! <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> that gives us a no answer, but too much was given away, I'm afraid, Bill. Well, we'll see what we can do. Two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. I'm sorry, Mr. Serrata, but you did give away the fact that you must have something to do with the animal kingdom, did you not? Uh, I'm afraid I did. That's right. We want to keep you on as long as possible because you're very attractive, so we'll try to get no yes answer. <laughs> <laughs> right. Are the animals domesticated animals? No. There that you are. makes it three down and seven to go, Mr. Surf. Well, Mr. Serrata, the, the circus being in town, I wonder if... Uh, the animals that you have something to do with are used as exhibitions in circuses or carnivals. No. That makes it four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. But they are not animals that we would have around the house. No. <laughs> yes, they are not animals you would have around the house, no. Uh, are they uh, found in the United States? No. That makes it five down and five to go, Mr. Lewis. You do what you do in the United States. I... Am I right in assuming that you do not work for the circus? Uh, you're right. Uh, do you work for a zoo? Yes. Uh, are you a keeper? Yes. Now we got to figure out what kind of animals. Uh, is this a... Why? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't I bother? Are they, uh, are they uh, four-footed? Yes. Uh, are they rather large? Yes. They would not... Would, uh, would they be seen in a circus? Would, am I, oh, uh, they would not, yes, be seen in a circus, no. Don't answer that. Uh, I'm trying to. Th how do you do it that way? I'm, that's a tough that way. Oh, answer. is it true that they would not be found uh, in a circus? They could be in a circus, yes. Thank so you. the answer to that would be a uh -huh. That makes it six down and four to go, Miss Francis. Um, is it an animal whose. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> whose spits? <laughs> Or a camel. No, it's not. <laughs> is it a what? A llama or a camel. Do llamas and camels expectorate? They, the they do. Oh, <laughs> Seven down and three to go, Mr. Sir. Uh, Mr. Siwada, uh, is, is this a, are these very big animals that you deal with? Uh, yes. <laughs> would they be in the elephant class? You mean in terms of size, or yeah. would they be elephants? I mean, we want to well, help you, Bennett. Uh, all right, are they elephants? No. No, that makes it eight down and two to go, Miss Kilgallen. Have they either spots or stripes? <laughs> Nine down of one to go, Mr. Lewis. Oh, I, uh, they're big like an elephant, though? No spots. Uh, I mean, they're about, I mean, they're they're weight or something. Like yes, they're heavy. Hippopotami? Muscles? Hippopotami, that's Hippopotami. right. Hippopotami. <laughs> <laughs> and Mr. Serrata is responsible for the feeding, cleaning, bullying, and cajoling of these <laughs> gentle little things that weigh over a ton. Do they spit? <laughs> no, not at the Bronx Zoo, <laughs> leastwise they don't. Thank you very much, sir. Nice to have had you with us on What's My Life. 
Uh, now, actually, we have a small chore for you next week. This is getting so involved, I wouldn't dare try to delineate all the changes that will take place, but we will be back next week at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time, and you try to figure that out in your own terms. Until next week, this is John Daly saying good night, Miss Dorothy. Good night, John. Good night, Bob. <laughs> you were a great help tonight. <laughs> Good night, Dorothy. Good night, Arlene. I hope you don't find me spitting lawn. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Bob. Good night, Martin, wherever you are. Good night, Bennett. Good night, Phyllis, who I know is in Oklahoma City. <laughs> and to you, John. Good night, Bennett, and say hello to all our friends in San Francisco, Santa Barbara, and Los Angeles, and have a good trip. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us on What's My Line? Transportation for What's My Line was arranged by American Airlines. Guests are flown to New York aboard America's famous luxury flight, the DC-7 Mercury. This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production in association with the CBS Television Network.